Hello everyone, we are going to analyze frequency response of BJT and FET. Before that, we'll see few concepts. Frequency response is one of the most important property of amplifiers. In the frequency range that the amplifier has been designed for, they must deliver a constant and acceptable level of gain. The frequency response depends directly on the components and the architecture chosen for the design of the amplifier. The frequency response of an amplifier has three regions, namely mid-range, low-range and high-range. Here's the frequency response of an amplifier. The increasing steep denotes a low frequency range and the constant one is the mid-frequency and the decreasing one is a high-range. And the most common tool used to represent the frequency response of any system is the body plot and it consists of the normalized gain AV as a function of the frequency in log scale. And the band of frequencies over which the gain of the amplifier is almost constant to within a certain number of decibels, usually 3 dB, that is 0 0.707, is called the amplifier bandwidth. And if you see the mid-range, the gain is almost constant and the gain at f equal to f, that is our low frequency, and uh, at f equal to f, that is our high frequency, is 3 dB less than the maximum mid-band gain. This 3 dB less than the maximum mid-band gain denotes our cutoff frequency. And the bandwidth of the amplifier is defined as f minus f l. And here's the frequency response the diagram. This region, as I said, denotes a low frequency and it is due to the coupling capacitors and the bypass capacitors, namely CC, CS or CE. And this region is a high frequency and this is due to the parasitic capacitance. And this region is a mid-frequency region. And this line is our mid-frequency gain, that is AV emit. And 3 dB less than is our cutoff frequency that is 0 0.707 of AV mid. From here, our low frequency FL and our high frequency FH are calculated and our bandwidth as I said FH minus FL. And now, for the analysis of BGT, we design a voltage but divided by our circuit. This type of biasing is chosen because it is more stable compared to other biasing method. And this voltage divided by us is examined in two methods. One is exact and another one is approximate. We prefer approximate method and it can be applied only if specific conditions are satisfied. And this approximate approach permits a more direct analysis with the savings in time and energy. And here this diagram denotes our voltage divided by us configuration. And the corresponding graph defines the Q point for the voltage divided by us configuration. Now, in the approximate method, this RA resistance, that is our reflected resistance, is considered to be the equivalent resistance between our base and the emitter for the transistor with an resistance RE. And this reflected resistance RA is defined as beta plus 1 into RE. And if this RI is much greater than R2, then our IB current will be much smaller than the I2 current. Then our I1 will be approximately equal to I2. And uh, if I1 is equal to I2, then R1 and R2 can be considered as a series elements. And now, the voltage across R2, that is our base voltage VB, which is determined by a voltage divider rule. So our VB is equal to R2 into VCC by R1 plus R2. And the reflector resistance, as I said, that is beta plus 1 into RE is approximated to beta RE. So uh, by approximation condition, our beta RE is uh, greater than or equal to 10 R2. We can even say if the beta times RE is at least... Uh, 10 times of the R2, then our approximation can be applied with a high degree of accuracy. And uh, V is calculated as 
we know VBE, VBE is equal to VB minus V. From here, our VE is calculated. And by using Ohm's law, IE is calculated as uh, VE by RE and our IC is approximately equal to IE. And this um, collector emitter voltage, that is our collector emitter voltage is calculated as VCC minus ICRC minus IERE. We know IE is approximately equal to IC. So we are obtaining VCC minus IC into RC plus RE. Now we will see the uh, simulation for the frequency response of BGT. Here we have the BGT circuit with voltage divider configuration and this circuit is designed with a beta value of 250. And we are going to run this uh, stimulation in interactive mode. Here we require only the gain plot, so taking off the face. And for having a clear picture, I am going to change the range. Here you can see we have obtained a frequency response for our PJT circuit. Now we are going to calculate bandwidth. For that we need to know our mid band gain. So move the cursor to the mid region. Here you can find this is the second uh, cursor. So our Y2 value gives our mid band gain. That is 34.4696. Okay. Now for calculating our uh, bandwidth we need to know low frequency and high frequency before the for uh, knowing it we need to calculate our uh, cutoff for calculating cutoff minus um, 3 dB from our uh, mid band gain that is 34.4696 minus 3 gives 31.4 that is our cutoff moving the cursor to that place so just right click set go for set value and enter 31.46 repeat the same for the next cursor now if you see our low frequency is the 1.2241 kilohertz and our high frequency is 105.5107 megahertz. We know bandwidth is equal to high frequency minus low frequency that is 105.51 minus converting the kilohertz to megahertz we will get 0 0.0012. So we are obtaining 105.508. And now for the analysis of FET, we design a self bias circuit. The self bias configuration eliminates the need for two DC supplies. This is a self bias configuration and the corresponding uh, plot uh, defines the Q point for our self bias configuration. In FET, our beta value is determined as IDSS by modulus of VP the whole square. And next is a famous... Uh, Shockley's equation that is ID equal to IDSS by 1 minus VG by VP the whole square. And in the uh, general relationship uh, is applied in a FED that is IG is equal to 0 and our IS is equal to ID. Since our IG is equal to 0, the RG resistance is short circuited. And now the controlling gate to source voltage is determined by our RS resistance. So we obtain VGS is equal to minus ID RS. And from this equation we can see that VGS is a function of the output current ID. And by assumption we have VDS is equal to VDD by 2. And the voltage drain to source is uh, found by VDD minus ID RD minus ID RS. Now we will stimulate the circuit. Here we have the FET circuit in the self bias configuration and the transistor is edited with a beta value of 0.222 milliamperes per whole square. And now we are going to run the stimulation in interactive mode. Here we are in need of only the gain plot. So here we are. 
and now if you see the gain scale uh, it is in linear mode okay before in uh, bjt we have seen in uh, decibels now we'll see the linear mode calculation okay first for our uh, bandwidth calculation we are in need of our mid band gain so moving the cursor to the mid region here we can find our uh, mid band uh, gain is 1.3594 so to get the cut off we need to multiply 0 0.707 with our mid band gain value that is 1.3594 when we multiply we obtain uh, 0 0.916 this is our cut off value moving the cursor to that region so right click set value 0.961 repeat the same step for another cursor and now when you see we find that our low frequency is 14.1623 and our high frequency is 28.5571 mhz we know bandwidth is equal to high frequency minus low frequency that is 28.5571 minus when converting the 14.16 hertz to megahertz we will get 0 0.00001416 which gives us a value of 28.55 megahertz this is our bandwidth thank you